Welcome to the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. I'm Aaron Brightman, and it's my pleasure to welcome back to the podcast Rutgers men's basketball head coach Steve Peichel, fresh off his overseas trip with the program. Coach, thanks so much for being here. Aaron, it's always good to be on. I hope you're good. I hope you're enjoying the summer. And uh, we had an interesting summer and an unbelievable trip. Uh, saw two of the most unbelievable countries and, uh, you know, learned a lot about my team and uh, had fun, played some good basketball and uh, left, you know, especially Africa with the newfound perspective, too, of, you know, life and um, of things that we really take for granted here in the United States that, you know, it's not like that every place. Um, running water and facilities to use restrooms. I mean, um, to see the hardships that, you know, uh, people in Senegal go through, you know, and they go through with smile on their face, great, happy, um, you know, I'm going to complain a lot less uh, nowadays, Aaron, for sure. And wanted to ask you about Africa in terms of you deciding to go to Senegal. Obviously, you have several players on the roster from Africa, but how important was it to you to, to choose that location and, and have those types of experiences you're, you're speaking of? You know, really, um, you know, my assistant coach, Steve Hain, had been there with his team when he was a Division II coach at Dowling um, and said, really, it perspective that it brings, um, uh, you know, the appreciation uh, all that, you know, and, and the hardships um, just to get over there. I've been recruiting, you know, players from Africa for 30 years, you know, and from everywhere, from South Africa to Mali to Nigeria, Senegalese players. Um, and I had never been. So, uh, you know, I thought it would be a good time for us to go. Um, it was an unbelievable trip. We were there for four days. Um, you know, just a country that, you know, I said, they don't have Gold's Gym, like they don't have workout facilities. They don't, but, but they figure it out. And a lot of my philosophy in basketball, sometimes you got to figure it out. You know, we play in the best league in the country and you got injuries, you got all kinds of different obstacles. You got to figure it out. And, you know, to be on the beach that day and to watch how they take a rock and, and, and they use it as, you know, a tool uh, for push-ups and sit-ups and everything, just a regular rock and, and, they take tires and they bury them in the sand and they use that as a, as an exercise tool. Um, you know, really just amazing. And, and, you know, at the end of the four days, I just said, you know, if you guys can't appreciate now what, what you do have and what we all have here in America um, and the ingenuity and how they figure things out without a lot, um, didn't see any phones there, to be honest with you. Like it was almost refreshing. They probably don't know what's out there in the world, you know, because they don't have that kind of technology, uh, but they're happy and, and uh, they're playing soccer over there all the time. They find a field, they put up some kind of goal post. could be anything. Whatever they have is the goal. They don't have netting on the back of the goals and they run around to play soccer. They're happy. Uh, one soccer ball and, and, you know, some great weather and uh, they're in great shape, the people there, and, and, you know, just tremendous. I just think tremendous for, you know, our players to see and, and, and tremendous obstacles that they have to overcome every day. And uh, in terms of the bonding experience for the team, uh, I know you also connected with some Rutgers folks out there, both in Senegal and Portugal, whether it be alumni, I think some former players as well. How important was that to show the team kind of the, you know, the worldly connections that there are out there with Rutgers? I mean, I really tell you, the, the longer I've been here, just the more powerful the brand is and Rutgers. I mean, there's people everywhere from every airport we went to and they saw the R, the block R and people traveling from New York or New Jersey, uh, you know, former alums, uh, students of, you know, a, a couple ran into me and my daughter went to Rutgers and we're here on vacation uh, in Portugal and you know, our former players that came back. We even met a, a football player from the class of 66 who's from Luxembourg, um, who as follows us as, as best he can, you know, through technology. Um, you know, you know, just really, uh, I tell our players all the time, you never know who's watching. You know, Rutgers is, is a brand that's everywhere. We have alums, proud alums in every country in the world. Um, and, and that they came to games. You know, they came to games. We have a season ticket holder who happened to be in Portugal and they changed their plans to come watch us play the last night of our tour um, for people. And, and um, you know, it was just really, uh, really exciting. 
the crowds we had too for the games, like people said, like they hadn't had that many people come to any of these, you know, foreign tours. Um, but you know, it was nice. The outreach is unbelievable, and the power of Rutgers University is is international. So obviously, it was a great opportunity for your team to for you to see your your team for the first time and in some type of uh, competitive action. Uh, a lot of newcomers on this roster. How, how did you approach it and how, uh, what did you get out of it as a team in terms of these three exhibition games and the practice time you had? You know, it's, it's always great. You know, every year is exciting to figure your team out and get to know all the new pieces. Um, you know, it's still a veteran team. I mean, Cliff has been around and has improved. Andre Hyatt was terrific on the trip. Our, our leading scorer, um really uh play with tremendous confidence and he's going to have just a terrific year um and obviously you know having Mawat you know back and he's not on the court yet but his veteran leadership and Oscar Palmquist going to have a great year he really very consistent as he was the last five games of the season last year high level competition um he carried that right over and he's athletic and he's shooting the ball well so, you, you know, veterans always carry your team, but I'm most proud of, you know, that sophomore class, really, the improvements. And that's what we've always built our program on, guys getting better. Wolf has lost 20 pounds. He's as fast and as athletic as anybody on our roster. Uh, he was really, really good in this. Derek Simpson's, an, you know, electric athletically and really has improved his shooting a great deal. And, and the guy that we redshirted last year, um, Antonio Cho can shoot the ball as well as anybody in the program and showed that, you know, on the court. Um, our speed and our athleticism is different, you know, with these nine guys. And then we added some new pieces. And uh, Jermichael Davis is, is, you know, as quick and fast as we've had here. Um, and, and Gavin Griffith is special, um, you know, can really shoot the ball. Every game he's going to get you 15, 18, 20 points. He just can really score and he knows how to play, um, you know, so – the trip was good for us basketball wise. I think more importantly, it was educational trip, you know, Gory Island where slavery, um, you know, took place and uh, where they ship people off through the uh, door of no return, um, you know, was really, you know, you know, touching, you know, so not just the basketball part, but just the experiences that they had and I think the appreciation that they came home with and, you know, the memories will, will go on, but, uh, Basketball wise, too, with Noah, a new player, you know, to our program, but he's, you know, been in college for a while. He's another veteran guy and he showed his leadership. He's a real vocal leader for us, too. And, um, you know, the games that he had and, and how he played was really, really encouraging. But, uh, you know, the one great part is, and I've said this all along through our workouts and stuff, we, we're, we're different shooting the ball. We got a lot of guys that can shoot the basketball and we haven't really had that in the past. Um, you know, so, we, you know, Noah can shoot the ball from deep. Joel can shoot the ball. Gavin Griffith can shoot the ball. Obviously, Andre can. Obviously, Oscar can. Um, Derek Simpson's going to be an improved three-point shooter. Wolf hit a three on the tour. You know, so, um, you know, I think our ability to shoot the ball. And then we got to get these other guys healthy because we got a few more pieces. And those guys got to get back on the court. And they're headed in a good direction, too. And, um you know, they'll add, they'll add some more depth to, you know, what I think would be the most athletic team that we've had. And uh, touching on the shooting part, you were 48 of 100 from three on the trip. I know results should be tempered based on, you know, conditions, competition, all that. Um, but it did seem like there was more of an up-tempo style. Obviously, you did play under FIBA rules two of the games, so you get more possessions. But uh, how much of a focus based on that improved athleticism and shooting that you spoke of? you know, what will dictate kind of a different type of offensive style? You know, Aaron, every year, you know, you try to find, a, you know, something your team's good at. And in the past, I want to run, everyone wants to run. Well, if you got, you know, C.J. Gettys at the center spot and you got some other things, you know, you know, like you, you, I've done a great job through the years, my staff and I, you know, let's let's figure out what the style is that's going to help us win games. And we've won a lot of games over the last few years and, Every team is very different, and um, we've added some real athletic, you know, pieces. You know, Jermichael is athletic. Uh, Gavin Griffiths is athletic. Ch you're going to see Chol has got an athleticism to him. Obviously, Derek Simpson's athletic. Um, Wolf now is athletic. Obviously, Cliff is athletic, um, and they could really run. Andre could run. Um, you know, so you try to 
you know, find the style that best fits this year's team. And every year, guys, I want to do this. I want to do that. You know, well, if, if your team isn't built that way, then, you know, it's hard to do that. And, and uh, you know, I think this year's group is just, you know, more athletic. And once we get Moab Mag back, we know what kind of athleticism he has. Emmanuel's very athletic. He'll be um, one of the biggest players in the conference. Uh, you know, so we're, we're, we're adding some more pieces that way. And, um, you know, but sp- – Space in the floor, you're still going to have to win games downhill, get into the rim, you know, live by the three, die by the three. You know, everyone thinks that solves all the problems. It, you know, doesn't sometimes. You win some games because you make threes and you'll lose other games because you take too many threes. Um, you know, so we're going to do a great job again figuring out what the best style is for this group. But this group is athletic and and, and, and they want to get up and down. And the FIBA rules, 24 seconds, we didn't have one shot clock violation um, you know, you play with a different basketball, um, you know, there's a lot of different rules and I think we embraced them and, you know, we got up and down and, and the competition was, you know, a Senegal team was, was terrific. So they could play anybody. Um, and then the two Portuguese, they had, they had some players and, you, you know, they had the home court advantage and, you, you know, you, you learn a lot. You still have to put the ball in the basket. I don't care who you're playing. Mm-hmm. You know, you still, the ball's got to go in and, and, uh, we were able to shoot at a high level, and I even think we could have shot for a higher percentage from three, um, you know, than we did. So that was a really good sign. And, you, you know, the most important thing is you get a lot – you learn a lot about your team. You know, every team is different. Every team is different with leadership. Um, and you, you, we got some new pieces here, and, 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 you know, you figure those guys out a little bit, and it gives you an advantage. And you touched on Gavin Griffiths, obviously a huge, uh, you know, incoming player for you. Uh, how do you manage expectations for him and, and how has he embraced kind of the opportunity to be here? Yeah, I mean, now seven years into this, you can't manage expectations. So, you know, that was lost seven years ago. There was none. Now uh, they talk about everything. He, he's ready for college basketball. He's um, really knows how to play. Um He's unique. He's athletic as can be, which we haven't had a six eight wing that can do what he can do above the rim. Um, but he really knows how to play, and the guys have embraced him. He can shoot the ball; he gets it off quickly. Um, he can go downhill too, which was was great, you know, because we need him to get to the rim too, and he's a good finisher. Um, you know, and and he's learning college basketball. I mean, it's it's physical; it's different than high school. Uh, but he's really coachable. He's a great kid, you know, from a great family, and he works at it. So uh, excited about, you know, Gavin and, 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 you know, I still believe with him, basketball, the upside is is really, really unbelievable. And uh, I've said this before this offseason, I think you and your staff did a tremendous job just in terms of the uh, additions you made and the portal and everything you dealt with this offseason. Um, you know, obviously losing uh, Paul Mulcahy, Cam Spencer. I wanted to ask about Noah Fernandes and what he brings to the team. Uh, obviously, you mentioned his experience at UMass, but uh, I think he's, you know, a little bit different of a type of player than you've had in the past. Yeah, I mean, every year you lose players. So, you know, um, I think your program, you know, continues to do what it does and the improvements of Chole and the improvements of Derek Simpson, the improvements of Wolf. Um, improvements of cliff and our veteran guy is going to be very very important then you also got to add some pieces you know and uh we're lucky that you know our newcomers you know all add something different noah's very mature he's been in college basketball you know he started at wichita state you know and they were coming off a final four you know he was the leading scorer for umass um you know he really knows how to play and what i'm finding with him as he continues to get in shape uh, in great shape which he's going to need to continue to do um, he can really defend, um, plays at a different pace. He's a veteran guy. He's very crafty, um, you know, can really shoot the ball, um, you know, at a high level and, and, and is a really good passer. So uh, thankful to Adam. And, and he's, you know, given us some real maturity, a guy that's been around. He's hungry to win, um, you know. So just like all the newcomers, they all add something, you know, a little bit different. He adds experience and playing at a high level and success at a high level he's had. Um, you know, I remember the 16 and 11 he put on us. We had a hard time keeping him out of the lane because of his shiftiness. Um, and now I'm glad to have him on our side now. And uh, I think he's going to have a really good year as he continues to get in great shape. And, um, 
you know, can can really shoot the ball and, and gives us some really a, a lot more experience. You know, this this group is good. We got good experience. We got veteran guys. Everyone can kind of shoot the ball. Um, so really, it's it's you know exciting time, and it's anchored around you know Cliff. He came back, came back to graduate, and you know I just want to reiterate that how thankful I am for that, and and for an old fashioned reason too. Come back to graduate, you know, like how how great is that? Um, he's gonna have his degrees, been a dean's a student, but his improvements, you know, I think he's one of the best big guys in the country, and he's got to be that for us this year. And Again, Andre Hyatt is exciting. We get Mawat back. You know, Oscar can shoot the ball. Gavin gives us a different dimension. I mean, we had a lineup out there the other day that was as big. Gavin at the two at 6'8", and Andre, um, you know, Chol at 6'9", and Wolf at, you know, 6'9", at the four, and Cliff. Like, you know, we could do some unique things with this group. Um, And, you know, excited to, you know, excited about that for for the future. And another... another Experienced guy, uh, Austin uh, William, William. Uh, veteran guy, uh, hasn't didn't play on the trip, I don't believe. But what does he bring to the table, and how does he kind of give you another element, uh, you know, uh, for you to be able to utilize in your rotations? You know, he just got cleared the minute before we left, so right. uh, to go on the trip, and um, you know, he hasn't been cleared uh, medically yet to to play, um, but he's headed in a good direction there. I mean, he's a downhill driver with terrific size shoulders. And again, another mature guy that's been around, had to, you know, fight through obstacles, you know, in his career. He practiced this year in in January on at FIU. Um, So he was cleared to to do that. And now he's just got to continue his rehab to get himself 100%. And uh, we're looking forward to having him. He gives us another dimension, too, with the size and experience. And downhill, he's another good athlete. you know, and a great kid from a great family. So glad glad to have him as an addition to the team. And uh, did want to ask, we're talking Tuesday morning, uh, came out late Monday. Um, in terms of uh, Jeremiah Williams, is there anything you can comment on in regard to the report from Iowa uh, in regard to the charge that is uh, reported out there? Yeah, I mean, this is an ongoing investigation, you know, that we can't really comment on. Uh, and there hasn't been any charges to, to date, just the article in the paper. So uh, we'll deal with the investigation and um, we'll comment at a later time. Thanks, Coach. Uh, moving on, just wanted to address a, a lot of changes this offseason. You hi- hired Marlon Williamson as your new assistant coach, placing Carl Hobbs. Uh, how is he acclimated into the program and what does he bring to, to the team? Well, Coach Williamson's been a you know great addition. He's a high energy guy um, with tremendous ties all over the country. You know, I like the fact that he's worked at some tough places, led LIU to an NCAA tournament, led UMass to an NCAA tournament. Uh, was a really good player at Youngstown State, um, and you could already tell he's paid dividends. His uh, reach is you know international, really, but definitely all over the country. Um, has tremendous ties and respect. So I think, you know, we're very fortunate. Um, we're thankful for Coach Hobbs' time. Uh, but to get a, a new coach with his experience and his outreach and um, his background has really been uh, really been exciting for me. And, and, and the different people he's been able to touch already has uh, been really amazing in a short period of time. And... Uh... You know, obviously this off team is very different with recruiting and, and I know there's potential changes out there with the recruiting calendar. Uh, you know, any thoughts on that in terms of the proposals that are out there and just how this off season has been, you know, for you personally uh, and this program uh, being able to, to, you know, thrive despite all the uh, obstacles you have gone through. It's like any other off season, you know, like, uh, Although more people follow us now, which is tremendous. And I thank you guys for that. I mean, we have a lot of, I thought when I first got the job, I had like, you know, five assistant coaches. Now I have 505. Um, <laughs> but that's been the great, you know, uh, credit to my staff. You know, when you say all these changes, we, you know, Brandon Knight's back. Um, unbelievable assistant. TJ Thompson's back. Steve Haynes back. Mike Larkin. So we're, we're a staff that. You know, Dave Van Dyke's still here. Rich Campbell's still taking care of our guys. Um, I still have a great athletic director in Pat Hobbs. So 
you know, we we really, uh, you know, are blessed and, and uh, you know, we're going to continue to do what we do, um, you know, Aaron, and I think this is important. Make guys better. Guys come here, they graduate. Um, how proud am I of Caleb McConnell signing with Oklahoma City Thunders? How proud Ron Harper signs, you know, I'm on the phone, you know, the other day with some of our former players that are signing in different countries, um, you know, talking, you know, we brought Corey Sanders back to meet with our team this year and he's going over to Poland and having a great career, um, trying to get him to come back and finish up his degree. So proud of that. And, you know, we just build a program here every year with, you know, we're going to lose players. That's just how it is. And it's almost set up now that way. And I don't think, it's any different anywhere now. And um, I think your off season is going to be like that every year. Now um, kids have more choices and, and, you know, respect the decisions that they, they go through and make. There's a lot of different reasons to make them, but still proud of what we've, you know, continue to build, you know, kids get better, kids graduate. We compete in the best league in the country. We've added a few more teams now to make it a little bit more difficult. Uh, but I'm excited for our league too. We continue to bring in the best and the brightest, you know, programs and, in, in, in schools. And that says a lot about the company that we keep here at Rutgers University in the, in the Big Ten. And we're going to continue to, you know, recruit good kids that uh, are from good families. And, you know, I'm very confident that this year's group, good, great kids from great families that are going to work to overachieve and get better. And we're going to continue to be real competitive, you know, on, on the court and uh, during difficult, during some, you know, not difficult, just changing times. So everything changes and we got to keep changing with the tide. Just a couple more for you, Coach. Did want to ask in that regard with NIL and the work you're doing with Knight Society and Knights of the Raritan. You had that golf event with Knight Society uh, about a month ago, and I know Knights of the Raritan has made an impact for you as well. Uh, you endorsed them recently again. Uh, what, what has that meant to help with the program in terms of those changes and, and moving the program forward? Well, I mean, I think it's like anything. It's the new wave of college athletics. It's important, you know, that we get the kind of support that that we need. Um, these, these players nowadays have a lot of options and, and a lot of reasons to pick schools or not pick schools. Um, and uh, I just am thankful for all the work, Knights of the Rared and the Knights Society. Um, we're hiring a general manager here too um, to navigate this. Life has changed a lot in the last three years, and, and especially in that area. And we need to keep up. If we want to compete, we need to keep up. So just thankful for everyone's support. We had a great event, um, you know, at Top Golf and we need to continue doing those kind of things to support, you know, support our guys. And I'm really thankful that they all came back because every single guy had options, to, you know, to go somewhere else and that they stay here and they're going to play for me for another year is just an honor. And, you know, I'm blessed again to be, you know, the head coach here and we're going to continue to do good things. I don't think you can get a ticket for a game this year. So that's changed in seven years. Um, but uh, I'm excited because they come to support our kids and, our kids are fun to watch. They're good kids, and they're trying to do the right things always. And uh, we'll continue to try to you know build that culture like that. And a quick question for you on the non-conference schedule: You announced two neutral games with Princeton. Uh, obviously, a ton of history there, and Mississippi State. Uh, how important was it for you to to um, add those types of level games to the non-conference schedule, which definitely seems like uh, you know probably your most competitive so far uh, on top of how competitive the Big Ten obviously is going to be? Well, I mean, I think for the last, you know, seven years anyways, and everyone could look into the analytics because that's you guys do a great job of that. We play a top 30 schedule every year at the end. And, you know, I think, uh, it, you know, I, I think that says a lot about, you know, us. I think it says a lot about the league. You know, I always want to challenge our guys. I think people don't understand scheduling is hard. Dates are hard. You know, you got two schools involved. They have different final exams than we do. They can't return games because they have a game two days later. We can't go someplace because we can't travel because we're just coming off of three travel games. You just, you know, you just can't pick up the phone and schedule everyone every time and everyone thinks it's kind of easy. It's the hardest thing you do probably. Um, I think we're headed to having all league games anyways. I've been saying that for five years and you know, so um, I think that's where this whole thing is heading down the road. So there'll be no longer, you know, um, non-conference games. That's just my opinion. And that's not coming from anywhere else, but that's where we're headed with this thing. So be a lot less things for you guys to talk about. I think <laughs> would be, you know, not a good thing. 
but every year try to you know set up a, a, a schedule that a you gotta you gotta build your team too you gotta figure it out a little bit i think people don't understand that process either um you know our teams tend to get better as the year goes on and you know you kind of got to figure out your team especially in this new world where you're gonna have new rosters every year um, so you want to give yourself a little bit of a, a time for that and time for your team to grow a little bit. And you also want to play games. We, we've worked hard to build a home court advantage. You know, like in, in, you do want to play games at Jersey Mike's, but people don't want to come into Jersey Mike's the way they used to either. So there's a challenge with that, too. Um, you know, but I like the fact that, you know, we're playing a well-rounded schedule. It'll be a top 25, 30 schedule again, like we play every year. And it'll more than challenge us for uh, – you know, what we got to face in the league and hopefully what we face, you know, in postseason. Last, last, last question. question. Just in Just terms, in terms of, uh, talking about Africa and, you know, the appreciation you, your team and your program got from life over there. Uh, also, just in terms of where you've elevated the program in your eight years, obviously, you know, recruiting wise, your Rutgers has mentioned when, when you go to recruiting events now, you're front and center in terms of how the national guys uh, you know, report about you. Uh, how 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 much does the team, the program, everyone involved, and yourself just appreciate how far Rutgers basketball has come, and having the opportunity to further the things even forward, more forward this coming year? Yeah, I, I mean, just very thankful. That, you know, that we've had the support of the university. You know, you know, Pat Hobbs getting into a great league, obviously, the great academic reputation we have, and the great alumni base you know, that we have here, you know, at Rutgers uh, enables us to do good things. And, you know, I just think if we continue to stick with our core, which is, you know, developing players and players getting better. And I say to our guys all the time, don't get caught up in the stars, get caught up in, in a kid that's going to have the will to get better and uh, players that want to be here. I think we have another perfect example this year of recruiting the right kids, um, uh, you know, for our university and, and do our due diligence. So, you know, Brandon Knight and TJ Thompson and now coach Marlon Williamson, you know, we, we do a really good job of evaluating kids. You know, we, we, we really try to still get kids that, in, you know, defense is important too. And get kids that have a little bit of that fiber to, you know, become great defenders. I mean, Caleb McConnell came into our program and, you know, he thought he was an offensive player and, and, and obviously, Every high school kid who can score points thinks that and became the national defensive player of the year for, you know, and, and now is playing at Oklahoma, you know, city, you know, for that reason, too. So still want to recruit kids that have those special tangibles that they can sacrifice and be unselfish and decide, hey, you know, I could get to the league two ways. You know, it's not just offensive numbers, um, you know, and, and, and I tell our staff that like recruit kids, it's just not statistics. You know, statistics don't win games all the time and statistics don't tell the whole story. Um, as journalists, I know we stats, 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 I get it, you know, but, you know, guys that can do other things and guys that are willing to sacrifice is what we want to continue to do and, and recruit. And that's what we're going to continue to do. And uh, because Jersey Mike's has become an exciting place to play, we're able to, um, you, you know, get involved with, with, with players, but you still want to bring in the right kids in, in your program that, you know, you don't want to be at Rutgers and, We'll continue to try to do that as best we can. Rutgers men's basketball coach Steve Peichel, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate all your insight on the program. And, uh, you know, congrats on a, on a successful offseason and looking forward to covering this team this season ahead. Aaron, I appreciate you checking in. All right. It's great to see you. Enjoy the rest of your summer. You too, coach.